For those of you that were here in the first half, this is Brian Haggard, part two. He finished up the first half of the morning, and um, he's going to present now on what happens when you mix kyrosan and poultry litter. I have a mic, but can everyone hear me in the back of the room? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can leave it off unless they start hammering next <laughs> they door. They start drilling like they did last time. We'll turn the mic on and see if that helps. So the presentation title, what happens when you mix Kytosan with poultry litter? Uh, it's a little different than my last presentation where I was working at the watershed scale, and now we're working you know, with, in the lab with little bitty bottles and syringes and you know, uh, things like that. And so my co-authors are Ian Bailey, who is... Uh, was an undergraduate in the Department of Biological Engineering at the University of Arkansas. This was his honors thesis research, and so I can't, I mean, I can't take a whole lot of credit because he did all the, he did all the work in the lab. He is now in medical school, so I'm sure you're kind of wondering why a guy was getting his hands in poultry litter and then decided to go to medical school. And uh, you know, I, I told him it'd make him a more well-rounded individual for his application to uh, medical school to have this type of research on his resume. And then uh, my other co-author is David Zarkoff, who is with the Department of Biomedical Engineering. And so now you're wondering, what does someone in biomedical engineering, what do they want to do with poultry litter? And so how this idea came about, mixing kyrosan with poultry litter, was David Zarkoff walked into my office, and this guy's a character. I mean, no, no one here knows him, but he is one of the funniest faculty members in the week. Sits down, and he's like, so what's this chicken poop and foster stuff. And I'm like, do you want the short answer or do you want the long answer? Because I can give you, you know, which one do you want to hear? And he goes, give me the short answer. And I'm like, we got a lot of, we're importing in phosphorus from the Midwest and feed. We're feeding it to our chickens. The chickens poop it out and it's staying here. And the problem is a lot of the phosphorus that's in the litter is soluble. When it rains, that runs off the landscape, ends up in our streams. We have a few lawsuits going around. And, uh, you know, we have accelerated eutrophication is a problem with that. And he's like, okay. He goes, what if I got the silver bullet for you? What if I got a chemical that you can add to it? And I'm like, well, there's, there's been a lot of snake oil salesmen, and there's been some silver bullets out there to reduce water extraction phosphorus. But I said, and, you know, I said, you know, tell, tell me more. And so what David runs is he runs the immunotherapy and vaccine delivery lab. That sounds a whole lot more important than the water quality lab that I run. And, uh, but his lab focuses on developing platforms for drug delivery, for vaccines and cancer therapy. And so one of the most promising things that they, they've been using is the, using Kyosan, which we'll kind of describe later, as their platform for drug delivery in you know, treating bladder cancer and breast cancer as well. And so he, he kind of told me, he goes, you know, he just, you know, he showed me a picture. Here's this molecule right here, and guess what all these groups down here do? They're positively charged. They'll remove anions from solution. And he goes, I think this thing has an affinity for phosphorus. And I said, all right, let's, let's play around with it in the lab and see what happens. And so, what is chitosan? Well, it's a derivative of chitin. Chitin comes from crustaceans, right? But they're shells. And, uh, and then, so you take that, you process it, do a process called deacetylation, Basically, you take off one of the groups and expose the amine groups there. Uh, there's different forms of chitosan, and they vary in price. Most of the chitosan out on the market right now is, is more for biomedical type applications, and so it's a really pricey chemical to deal with, but that's because they need it so pure to work in the biomedical industry. Whereas in the environmental industry, if it had some impurities, which would tremendously lower the cost, we might be able to utilize that a little bit more. And so it's a large cationic polysaccharide. Its structure makes it really good at chelating, absorbing, you know, whatever process you want to call it. You know, it removes phosphate and other highly reactive ions from solution. And it's not it's nothing new. It's it's actually been used in solid separation. There was when I started doing a little bit of lit review on chitosan applications at, in agriculture. It's been used in commercial wastewater treatment. It's been used in manure separation uh, over a decade ago. 
they didn't tie, you know, they didn't tie looking at its chemical properties, though. So there wasn't any focus there. There's a little bit of use of chiozan in to flocculate algae, just because of its, you know, its previous use in commercial wastewater treatment, and then also some use of uh, tie, tying the chiozan to carpets, basically, to help, you know, as water's flowing over it to help capture those 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 floating algae or whatever that are in the water. And so it kind of reaches out and grabs those and removes those from the solutions as well. And so David's sure he's got the, you know, he's got the answer for us in the poultry industry. And he's like, you know, are there any future applications for this? And I'm like, well, you know, let's, let's set up some experiments uh, and, and see what can happen. And so the things we wanted to see is can we reduce water extractable phosphorus in the manure? Does it have an impact potentially on ammonia volatilization? And what does it do? Because if you notice that chiozan molecule had a lot of amine groups, what does it do to the nitrogen value of the fertilizer? Does it, in, you know, do you see any increase in nitrogen value? And so our hypothesis were is that it, because of its chemical structure, is that it would decrease phosphorus, water extractable phosphorus in poultry litters. We did not anticipate that it was going to affect ammonia volatilization. There was not anything there that showed that it was going to change the pH of the litter, which is the big thing that we need to happen to decrease ammonia volatilization. And we hypothesized that because of all those amine groups, even though we're probably going to add it in relatively small quantities to poultry litter to evaluate it, we hypothesized that it was going to in increase the nitrogen content, increase that nitrogen to phosphorus ratio a little bit, and improve the value of the litter from that aspect. And then so what we did in our experiments was we kind of wanted a positive control, right? Well, we've heard for the last two decades about alum treatment of poultry litter and different things like that. So that kind of served as our positive control. You know, we wanted to use a chemical that we knew that was going to decrease ammonia volatilization and decrease water extractable phosphorus. And so alum was one of our treatments. And then we had the control litter, just our, you know, our, our negative control, our untreated control as well in this experimental design. So we ran three separate experiments. Uh, the first one was we just wanted to at a 1% treatment, that's weight to weight uh, treatment ratio. We just wanted to, let's just run a quick and dirty lab study to see does chiozan influence water extractable phosphorus in poultry litters. And then after that is we wanted to extend that same type of laboratory analysis out to higher values. We wanted to make sure we saw some benefits at the 1% because again, this you know, we're using the biomedical grade stuff, stuff that David Zara walked into my office and sat down and you know, one of the bottles was like this big and he was like, that's $250, so be careful with that, you know, and so we're like, okay, you know, the, the largest bottle I think was this big, so we had, you know, we had to do some fine scale laboratory experiments, and so we wanted to test it at 1%, we were going to extend that to 5 to 10%, which gets at our extension recommendations for alum treatment of poultry litter, and then the third one was do an experiment to look at ammonia volatilization. Yeah, you know, something really simple, but just get an idea is does it does it potentially influence ammonia volatilization? And so the first experiment, we took the poultry litter, 10 grams of it, 1% treatment of chiozan, 1% uh, treatment of alum as well, and also 1% treatment of just chitin. Wondering if whether or not do you even have to process the chitin? Could it have any benefit on the poultry litter? And we had three different grades. And so basically grade A, really, really small bottle, right? Grade C, slightly bigger bottle, right? Chitin, that came in a container about like this for about five, you know, 50 cents or something like that, the chitin did. And so we mixed the treatments with the poultry litter. We incubated them at room temperature in Ziploc bags, just a really simple experiment for an undergraduate student to manage. And then after three weeks, we extracted them at a one to 100 ratio with a deionized water, dry litter to, to a deionized water, and then we analyzed the extracts on ICP to look at how much phosphorus was in there. Pretty much the standard procedure for looking at water extractable phosphorus and poultry litter that we've evolved to over the last decade. And so what we saw is we definitely saw a decrease at the 1% treatment. The, all these slides will be set up the same way. You have the control here, alum, chitin, and then your three varieties of chitosan over on that side. And so what we were looking for is this box right here, right? Was chitin any different than 
alum and how alum performed. Well, we know alum significantly increased water extractable phosphorus relative to the control at this really low treatment ratio. Chitin, no different than the control, which is kind of what we were expecting to see. And then two varieties of the chitosan were not statistically different than what we saw with alum. So, okay, we, we, had, we had promising results here. And we thought, okay, now we can take that little bottle and we'll take a little bit more chitosan out of it. And let's run the second round of experiments. And so we did the same thing, and now we're focused in on one, uh, again, a 1% treatment ratio, a 5% treatment, and also a 10% treatment ratio. And, and we upped it to the 5 and 10% because that's what extension would recommend for alum treatments. And we were just trying to keep this comparable in, in a mass balance uh, approach. And we, fearful of running out of chitosan instead of using 10 grams of poultry litter, now that we're expanding onto this, we made a decision to go down to 5 grams of poultry litter. Uh, I, in hindsight, I probably would stick with 10 because of the variability you get when you get down to smaller sample size. And we extracted the poultry litter in the same way. And so what we saw at the 1% treatment is the results were not as clean because we'd gone down to 5 grams of poultry litter. So we had a little bit more variability in our wet values than we had in the previous experiment. But the chitosan treatments, again, were not statistically different than the alum treatment nor were they statistically different from the control in this, in this experiment at the 1% treatment ratio. But when we go to the 5% treatment, now we're seeing, some, we're seeing some nice results, right? We see significant reductions in water extractable phosphorus in the poultry litter, and it's not different than alum. We go to the 10% treatment, though, alum wins, right? Alum wins at the 10% treatment relative to the titles in. But you still see a significant decrease in the... Uh, water extractable phosphorus with chitosan treatment, although alum is significantly less than what we saw with chitosan. The interesting thing was, is the 5 and 10 percent treatments, there's no difference between how much phosphorus reduced. So we kind of maxed out at 5 percent. There's no reason to put more of this on except for maybe the beneficial nitrogen there. So the next experiment was we looked at ammonia volatilization. Something real simple, put poultry litter in a jar, treat it with uh, chitosan, chitin, aluminum sulfate, put a little glass vial in there with uh, acidified water in it to basically just capture, to passively capture all the ammonia that's being volatilized out of the poultry litter. All those flasks are capped off so that way they're cut off from the atmosphere and so there's no gas exchange. It's not a great way to get a quantitative measurement, but it's a good way to do some relative comparisons quick and easy in the lab about ammonia volatilization. And so alum, as it's been shown in the past, definitely influenced ammonia volatilization from the poultry litters. Chitosan did not any, do anything. But we did see a slight increase in the total nitrogen value of the poultry litter. At the 5 and 10%, we were seeing about a 0.5% increase in total nitrogen content. So it was going from 2.2 to 2.3, <coughs> up to 2.8 to 3.0. And so, not a huge increase, but a little bit more nitrogen value out of the poultry litter. So, we did notice one thing is that the chitosan was still in the particulate form. Like, you could see the little white flakes whenever we ended our incubations. And so, we knew it wasn't dissolving completely into the poultry litter. And, you know, this the way this molecule works is if it is dissolved, it kind of stretches out and it's like, you know, it's like a, a string in the water or something like that and it can grab onto a whole lot more things in the aqueous solution. And so typically what you do is you dissolve it in a 1.1 molar acetic acid solution is what they do in the biomedical applications. And so we thought, okay, let's try that. One benefit is using the acetic acid solution and putting that on poultry litter. You're going to decrease the pH of the poultry litter, increase or decrease ammonia volatilization. And then also maybe we see a further reduction in phosphorus. And so before Ian was going to go to Glorious Medical School, I convinced him, that's funny, one more experiment with manure. You know, this would, just, this would just finalize out your career here at the University of Arkansas. And so he did perform that one more experiment. And so what do we know from that is we know that when we mix, and, and the previous experiments, we know that we mix poultry litter uh, and chitosan together, we can reduce water extractable phosphorus. Chitosan alone does not in influence ammonia volatilization when but delivered in a 0.1 molar acetic acid solution. We saw a decrease in ammonia volatilization from the poultry litter. We increased the nitrogen content a little bit. 
And it looked like, you know, based upon these quick and dirty lab studies, that a, a treatment of a 5% with tyrosine with regard to uh, water extractable phosphorus reductions, that's kind of the optimal treatment ratio that we're looking at. And so the next step is Dave is working on is how can we process chitin into chitosan and make it affordable to possibly be used in the poultry industry. And with that, I'll be glad to take any questions. Yes, ma'am. Um, I, I actually had um, done the study with chitosan and looked at what the reason I was interested in it is to reduce ammonia production because it's a non-specific absorbent and nickel is a very important coenzyme in urease. And we actually saw really significant decreases in urease producing bacteria. And I'm just wondering, I know you, you, I didn't look at phosphorus, which is really interesting. But I'm just wondering um, what your moisture levels were in your litter. Because I'm, I'm wondering if we have better results because we have pretty moist litter. We uh, actually, because I'm pretty sure we read your paper. Yes. The first experiment, we used the litter as is, and so it was relatively dry, it was maybe 20% moisture. The second experiment, the last experiment I convinced Ian to do, we, were, we equalized the moisture across all litters to about 35%, so they were wetter. What we found, though, when we did that was with the Kaidozan, is we had increased nitrogen volatilization. When we just applied the Kaidozan in water, but when we applied the Kaidozan and the acetic acid, we had decreased ammonia volatilization. So there was kind of a trade-off there. And yeah, with my study, I'm pretty darn I'm sure I did not spend $250 on that. And we have a big bottle, so maybe there's other... There, 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 is, there is other forms. That's, a, that's what, I mean, David brought yeah. that in because of the way that he's using this in immunotherapy. And uh, it's the really pure stuff. And, and as you saw, as the, the grades that he gave us, there, there's no difference. Once you get it to about 75% deacetylation, it's pretty accurate. You probably got yours at Costco. I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's the other thing. I take it from my joints. So. <laughs> All right. Another question? Good. We've got a, we've got another minute here. Okay. I may have missed this, but when you delivered it with acetic acid, did it affect the water extraction phosphorus? It did not change it any more than what it did when we just mixed them uh, mixed it dry with litter. We didn't see any any, any large, any, you know, a significant reduction over that. So now it didn't. Bit. Yes. Yeah, we're looking at that way. Now, I think there's. I think we could do. We need to do some more studies with it. You know, to really see what benefit you could have. You know, 